day guys welcome back to another episode time for something a bit different to the usual content of this channel there's no fishing today what we're going to be doing is putting together a beach cart so i've just got a whole bunch of aluminium here in front of me some big beefy beach ties and some other bits and pieces but we'll roll the intro i'll show you where we're up to and uh what we're working on Before we start slapping this bad boy together I've got some pretty cool news and the reason why I'm building the beach cart is that I want to start doing some beach fishing tours or guiding chartering down here on the far south coast and there is no four-wheel drive access down here so beach carts gonna be the best way to lug around a lot of rods a lot of gear that kind of thing with that being said um, what I've done is designed this beach cart to be a a pretty big bopper so you could use the same principles, pretty much the same design and downsize it to what you want to use. Uh, B, it's going to be pretty lightweight and it's going to be basically all aluminium. So it should be very rust resistant as well. So just quickly before we get started, I'll bring you up to speed on what we've done so far. And all we've done is cut down the pieces using a mitre saw which I'd highly recommend using. It gives a very nice edge where it doesn't need uh, deburring or anything, as well as there are a few 45 degree cuts in here, um, which has made it very easy to do. You probably could get away with doing this with an angle grinder, but a miter saw has made it very, very easy. Um, and what we're gonna do is just pop rivet everything together with aluminium rivets. If you did want to make this completely out of the 25 by 25 mil square tube, there is a company called Flexliner in Western Australia, I believe, which make tube connectors, which are nylon coated, but have a steel core. So they're going to be super strong. They also, also are a bit pricey at around about that $9, $10 a join. So that's all we've done so far is cut down the pieces and put angles in them and now we're just going to be pop riveting, pop riveting them in place i'm not going to do every single join and that kind of thing uh, so i'll show you generally what we're doing and then just show you what uh, the finished kind of piece assembled looks like so the whole card is basically made out of square tube right angle and flat bits of aluminium and I've put the exact dimensions of those down in the description. And the joins are gonna work by just taking some of that flat or right angle and then drilling through that into some square tube, pop riveting it. That's it, pretty simple. It's um, worked out to be pretty strong as well. So just the whole method is use a hole punch so the drill bit doesn't wander. Drill through, put a pop rivet in and that's it. An extra set of hands, definitely helpful. You could probably do it yourself with a lot of clamping and that, but much easier to just have someone butt up a bit of square tube into the right angle and drill through. And so what we're looking at here is, I guess, the undercarriage where the four bits of square tube are gonna connect up to the bed of the cart. And then we've just got four bits of right angle surrounding at the bottom. And on the side of that is what the U-bolts to hold the axle are gonna go through. And here's what the finished piece looks like. Just added two more bits of square tube on the inside of the right angle, and that's just on the sides where the U-bolts go through, make it a bit stronger and allows the nuts to fit on properly. Here's what it looks like with the tyres and axle on. So I'll link where I got these balloon tyres from and they just suit a 20mm round tube. So that's aluminium as well. 
drilled through each side of the tire, put on a washer for a spacer, then some split pins through the holes to secure them. Next, we just have two lengths of right angle that are gonna run up the center of the cart bed and just gonna drill and pop rivet through the side of those into the uh, legs of the undercarriage there. So here's what we've ended up with. We've got the back tires to the right there and you'll just notice that I've moved them in a fair ways and that's just so I can get the cart to do a wheelie so it can uh, maneuver a bit better. And next piece is the bottom rail of the cart. So we've just got square tube forming the sides and then some right angle at each end. You'll just see here I've cut the right angle at 45 degrees using a miter saw and that's going to marry in with another bit later on. So you just attach the bottom rail with pop rivets going through the right angle into the other right angle. And I did just make a little error here where at the front wheels too far forward they were just sticking out a little bit. So I just drilled those out and moved them back slightly. Next, just gonna add two bits of square tube on top of the right angle we've got running up the middle. And that's just gonna make it a bit stronger and it's gonna bring the bed of the card up level for some bits of flat aluminium we're gonna put across it in a bit. Just drill down through the right angle into the square and put about five or so pop rivets each side. So here's the flat aluminium pieces going across the bed and just line those up with the joins from the undercarriage. And just drill through into the square, more pop rivets. So here's the top rail is that square tubing and the right angle is going to connect it to the rest of the cart. You'll just notice that with the square tubing I've cut it at 45 and they're just going to all marry into each other and be a nice clean join. And then on the right angle as well there's a 45 degree cut and that's going to marry in with that other cut in the 45 of the bottom rail. So just the pop rivet through the side of the right angle into the square again. And then the ends of the top rail, they're square as well. Cut at 45 and then just pop riveted through the side. And then here we've just added some more flat pieces, so two on each end, three on each side. And here's the start of the handle, the horizontal square tubes going out to the handlebar, the vertical is going to go down to the cart and just have a bit of right angle joining those with pop rivets. Next, adding a little tray for the cutting board to sit in so it doesn't slide around. And that's using 20 by 20 mil 
right angle. And also another bit of right angle on the inside of the handlebar join, just for a bit more strength. And there's what the finished tray for the cutting board looks like. And then just added a bit of flat on each side of the handle for a bit more support and cut off its ends at 45 for a nice finish. And so the way I designed this is that when the handle is on its side, the cart will actually fit in between just to minimize the space it takes up in the car. Then mounted two sections of 30 by 30 millimeter square tube and this is what the handle tube is going to fit into. So just added two more bits of square tube to the bottom rail as well and that's what a bolt goes through and the bottom of the handle is going to rest on that. On the open ends of the handle I added two chair leg stoppers as well. So there is the cart mostly finished. And what I also did when putting the cutting board tray on was make sure there was just a big enough gap there to slot a knife and sharpener in. Now just adding a liner to the cart, stop things falling out. And the best thing I found was pet mesh, which is basically a heavy duty fly screen. And it's working pretty well, lets most of the sand fall through and hasn't torn or anything like that. The alternative would be a metal mesh or an aluminium mesh, but that's gonna be a fair bit more expensive and add a bit more weight to the cart. So that's a piece to go down the side. And what we did is just drill through the top and bottom of the right angle and flats, put a rivet through, put the mesh over the rivet, squashed a washer down and then popped the rivet. For the front and rear of the cart and the bed, we just use a single piece and same thing, drilled through the bits of flat and then put rivets top and bottom and then along the sides and then put three down the middle as well with large washers. Here we're making up the rod holders and I actually came up with a way to make them removable from the cart rather than have to carry extra to put into the sand. And how we're going to do that is make it so they fit on bungee buttons which are connected to the rails of the cart. So here we've got a bit of wood we're using as a template where we know the holes are going to line up for the bungee buttons. And this process was made a bit trickier by not having a step drill. So what we ended up doing, and you'll see in a second, is using a range of different drill bit sizes. So the first step was to drill pilot holes that are going to fit the bungee buttons, then increase the size of those, and then we're going to increase the size of those again with a mega drill bit, which was a pain in the ass to use because it kept tearing the PVC. What we figured out in the end is if you just left it in reverse, then it would just kind of melt the PVC and work really well. 
and here we're just measuring up where the slot is going to end up and that's 25 mil up from the hole that the bungee button's going to go through. And so here's that drill bit. Again, this would be much easier if you just had a step drill, but this is all we had that was going to allow the bungee buttons to fit inside the rod holders. And then a pilot hole just marking where the end of the slot is and then going through with a larger drill bit which matches the bungee button. This will become a bit clearer as you see how they go on in a second. Then we just use the jigsaw to cut from the larger hole up to the smaller hole. And so there's a couple of the bungee buttons we've mounted already. They fit into the larger hole, go up the slot, and then the rod holder is nice and secure. And here's just how we use the same template to mark where the bungee buttons are going to go. It's clamped at the top, drilled through the two holes. So there's a pack of the buttons and just going to put those on using stainless steel self-tapping screws. Here I'm just using a spare bit of the 25mm right angle and marking down the front of the rod holders and going to cut out a little reel seat so the rods don't swing around. And then it's just the same process as making the slots on the back, drill out a hole and then use the jigsaw to cut down to it. And there's all the rod holders finished. I reckon it looks pretty schmicko. It was now that we took the cart for a couple of test runs and just wanted to see how it went without a handlebar. And we decided that yeah, it definitely would be better with one. So that's what we're gonna get onto in a second. And so the handlebar isn't anything fancy, it's another piece of round aluminium tube, this time 40mm in diameter, and we're just going to drill through both ends of it and then bolt it onto the square tube that comes out. And so here we've already drilled through one end of the round tube and bolted it to the square. Now we're just going to mark the other side so it lines up well with the hole in the square tube.
So there's the handle, nothing fancy. Might put a wrap on it at some stage, probably in the winter when it gets a bit cold, but um, for the moment, we're just gonna leave it as is. We also just put a little hole underneath here and bought a tent pole from the guys at Boss Outdoors. So in our test runs, we just noticed that when you're cleaning a fish at the table, it kind of rocks a little bit. So we're just gonna use that to um, shore it up whenever you set up, make it nice and stable. It's just one of the twist lock ones, so drop it down, twist it in, and away you go. So here's the finished card at the beach and very happy with how it's turned out. Rock solid and rolls surprisingly well even in the soft sand. It's not much of a difference between the hard sand really with the tyres. Manoeuvres well, just push down on the handle to lift the front up. Very, very happy. And so the cart bed has come in at 18 kilos and that is very manageable for me putting in and out of the tub of my ute. As for the cost, it's come out at about $660. A lot of that is the wheels which were $235 delivered but well worth it. $217 for the aluminium, $69 for the pet mesh. 54 in the fasteners and the big washers and things like that The cutting board was 45 bucks delivered and then about 40 bucks for the rivets the end caps and that kind of thing But yeah, well worth it especially as I'm using it for the charter. So very happy with how it's turned out You could definitely make it smaller as well. This is a pretty extra size cart Anyways, if you've enjoyed, like and subscribe would be awesome. If you've got any questions, put them down in the comments as well and I'll get back to you.